Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Tonya or Tonya's Historical Life. Today I would like to show you how I make my Viking Age apron dresses or smucker as they are also called. So this would be a very high status rich woman's garment with the expensive oval brooches and glass beads. And it's a very very easy garment to make. This one consists of four pieces uh, and in this video I would like to show you how to make one. I also made a tutorial on my blog uh, following this video so if you have problems understanding some parts of the video you can go to my my blog. I have linked it down below in the description of this video and there you can also find some extra tips for the apron dress. If you like to see some more pictures of my apron dresses, you can also go to my Instagram. I have a bunch of pictures there uh, of my different apron dresses. And um, you can also find some pictures on my blog. Oh, and please subscribe to my channel and don't forget to comment and like this video. Enjoy! So the first thing I like to do is take all of the measurements that I need and the first one I am doing is the circumference of the chest and as I am taking the measurement I am filling my lungs with air so my chest is really pumped up. The next measurement I am doing is the width of the front of the chest and the reason why I do this uh, measurement is because I'm making a four piece dress and I need to know how wide the panels will be. The third is uh, the length of the side of my torso and I measure from the bottom of my armpits and to the place where my hip starts going out. The fourth measurement is the total length of the dress and I measure wherever I want it to start and all the way down to where I want it to end without bending my knees or hip. When you have figured out what kind of fabric you want to use for your project, I always start constructing the garment onto some paper. When I make a four panel dress, I always want the back and the front pieces to be a bit wider than the side pieces. So I figure out how wide the front and the back pieces need to be. So let's say your circumference of your chest is 100 centimeters and the width of the front of your chest is about 30 centimeters then the two uh, panels front and back will be 30 each, that's 60. And then there's 40 left of the hundreds, so 20 each for the side panels. So 30, 30, 20, 20 equals 100 centimeters. And here are the two pieces that will all together be four pieces. I like to lay my fabric out flat on the table and then uh, pin it together because I'm folding it so it lays double and the reason for this is because I'm making two panels at the time and I'm folding it so that the selvages are meeting and the raw edges are meeting. After I had folded my fabric I saw that my raw edge was very uneven so here I am making a line uh, to have something straight to work from. And then I find the middle of my fabric, so the uh, half of the width of the fabric. And I find the half of this half again. And I make a mark here. Now I am constructing the upper part of the front and back panels. So you divide the measurement of the front panel into two and you add these numbers to each side of the mark you made. I use my measuring tape to check that all of the measurements are correct and that all of the markings are 
are where they should be. I always make three marks or more uh, because then I have something to work from and I can make a straight line. I now have my two lines and now I am adding the measurement armpit to hip. And after I have done that I can make a straight line from that measurement and all the way to the total length of my dress as I am doing here. You will make two diagonal lines uh, both from the hip measurement and down out towards the middle of the fabric on one side and towards the edge of the fabric on the other side. I like to pin the fabric down with needles on both sides of my drawn line. Uh, this way it will stay put when I cut it. So you have now constructed the back and front panel of your dress and you will repeat the process and make the side panels on the other half of your fabric. Remember you divided the fabric into two on the width in the beginning and now it's time to do the process again on the other half using the measurements for the side panels. After you have constructed both pair of panels and pinned the pieces together, you can cut all of the pieces out by following the lines. In the beginning of the video we folded the fabric in double in the length you now have to cut where the fold is to divide the two pieces of panels that are stuck together in the bottom half. You can actually see the fold here in the video. I now have all of my four pieces cut out. Here you have one of the side panels, or actually two of them, they are pinned together. And then I take out all of the pins and I start assembling um, the panels together. And then I take one of the bigger panels, front or back, and putting it together with one of the side panels. And then the other big panel. And lastly the side panel. So it's big panel, small panel, big panel, small panel together. If you have a wrong side and a right side to your fabric, make sure that the wrong side is facing up while you're needling it together. You will also be needing something called seam allowance. This is the area between the raw edge and the stitching line on your fabric, um, which will prevent it from fraying. The seam allowance can vary in width, uh, from just a few millimeters to some centimeters depending on how skilled you are and of course how thick the fabric is. You need the seam allowance to be able to sew the two pieces together and also fold the seams down so that it doesn't fray. You add seam allowance to your measurements before you start constructing your dress or your garments. Some fabrics don't fray, of course, like the one I'm actually using in this video. But for the sake of the educational part, I will show you how to fold down your seams anyway. So there we go, all of the four pieces pinned together. I don't pin the last seam together because I want to leave the fabric flat. It's easier to work with than... A tube. So what you see me do now is actually measuring out the seam allowance onto my fabric. So I'll put my needle through the fabric and then measure uh, the distance from the raw edge and make sure that I am staying within my seam allowance. If I put the needle further away from the raw edge than what I measured out for my seam allowance, the garment will be too tight.
This is not my favorite uh, way of sewing, but my fabric was a bit too thick and the thread as well uh, for me to make my usual stitches. I really like to make my stitches really really small and uh, close together. So this was the best way with this fabric and the thread. You can see me adjusting the needle here uh, so that the seam is straight and the stitches are even and small. So now it's time to sew the pieces together and I start by sewing the four pieces together uh, only sewing the top part, the torso part. This way you can see if the dress fits you around the chest uh, and if it doesn't you don't have to undo a lot of seams. So here I am at the top of the fabric, just finishing up my seam. Uh, I want to stop uh, half a centimeter, a centimeter away from the raw edge because I want to be able to fold down the fabric here as well so it doesn't fray. So when you have tried on your dress and you find that it fits you well, you can continue sewing down the longer seams, um, the part from the hip and all the way down to the total length of your dress. So it takes a bit of time to sew by hand, but it's really worth it at the end, I think. You will also be needing straps for this dress, uh, two longer ones and two shorter ones. The longer ones go from the back to the front of the dress and the shorter ones are just hoops in the front of the dress. So these are what your oval brooches will go through and keep your dress up. For the straps you can either use the same fabric as your dress or you can use, for example, linen, which is actually more historical accurate. To measure how long your back straps needs to be, you place the measuring tape on the back side of the dress. It's very smart to actually wear the dress when you do this measurement. Um, take the measurement towards the front of the dress over your shoulder. For this measurement, you need to stand straight. Because the straps will go from the back side to the front side and then to the back side again to make a hoop, you double the measurement and add 5 centimeters or more if you're afraid that's too little. I have now measured out the length that I need for the back strap and the front strap. The front strap you will need about 10 to 15 centimeters. What you see me doing now is just measuring the width of one of the straps. And I like to do 4 centimeters um, for the straps because that makes the perfect width when everything is folded and sewn together. I like to make more marks alongside the fabric. Uh, this makes it easier to make a straight line which you can cut after later. I'll use a ruler to make a straight line and I carefully place the ruler onto the fabric and make sure that all of the lines or the marks that I made uh, line up with the edge of the ruler. When you have uh, drawn your line uh, throughout the whole length of your straps, you can cut uh, alongside the line. This way of folding the strap will leave no raw edges uh, facing outwards so the fabric doesn't fray. First of all I start by folding the fabric in half just to mark where the middle is. 
and then I fold both of the sides in towards the middle. And I fold it over itself again so that both of the raw edges is in the middle of the fabric. I take some linen thread and then I use some beeswax to make the thread stronger. I make sure that um, the thread is all covered with beeswax. I then sew uh, along the side with the folded part. And I sew with tiny tiny stitches so that the seam is almost invisible. As I'm sewing, I'm always adjusting the fabric so that the edges are meeting and it stays consistent with the width all the time. I first decided to make straps out of the same fabric as I made the dress from, but then I changed my mind. I wanted a more historical accurate look on the dress, so I decided to use linen fabric. So this means that I have to take off the old straps. And this is how I fold the strap. I do this with both the back and front straps uh, to make a hoop that the oval brochures can go through. To sew on the straps to the dress I make small stitches along the edge of the straps. And I sew alongside the edges that are both facing each other inside the dress but also the edges that are opposite to each other so that the straps are really secured onto the dress. I don't sew all the way through the fabric of the dress. This makes the seam invisible on the right side of the dress. To make the straps equal on both sides of the dress, I like to measure the distance from the seam uh, on the front, uh, like I do here. And also the height of the straps, especially the front ones. The back straps are easier to measure out. Um, you can just hold them together and make sure that they are the same length. The front straps, uh, which are a lot shorter, they can be placed quite far from each other, closer to the seams on the front panel, but the back straps need to be closer together in the center of your back. This prevents the straps from falling down from your shoulders. And before you sew on your straps, you of course need to fold down the raw edge at the top of your dress as you've seen I've already done in the video. You also need to fold down all of your seams meaning you need to fold down the part that I'm folding down right now in the video you know the excess fabric between the raw edge and your seam and the reason why we do this is to prevent the fabric from fraying, uh, preventing it from, you know, being damaged. And with this fabric, this particular fabric that I'm using for this dress, I don't really need to fold down the seams because the fabric is so tightly woven, it doesn't really fray. But if you use a looser woven fabric or even a thinner fabric, it will very easily fray and cause damage to your garment. So when you have sewn all of the pieces together, you've made your straps, all of the seams are folded down, both the top edge and the bottom edge of the dress, your straps are sewn to the dress, then you're actually done. Congratulations, you made your apron dress. Thank you so much for watching this video. 
If you have anything special you want to see me make the next time, comment below. And like this video if you want more videos like this. And don't forget to subscribe. Bye!